Okay, ready to rock and roll. Welcome to Meal Prep Like a Boss. <laughs> I gotta do it like that. <laughs> I can't do it like that. <laughs> All right, I am Amber Smithson, I'm Certified Health Coach, and I have with me the beautiful, wonderful Kirkley Freckleton, also <laughs> Certified Health Coach, and we're coming to you from um, Mapleton, Utah. I couldn't remember where I lived for a second. Because I just moved. So <laughs> I, my kids corrected me the other day. They're like, Mom, um, you just told someone you lived in Spanish Park. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's actually super pretty. Just right there, our field and the farmers like mowing the hay. <laughs> it is, I right? forgot what it's called entirely, but it's gorgeous here. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're so glad that you've joined us and um, we're so excited. I'm so excited. So currently, has been working on some really cool things with meal prep and with really making it more simple and straightforward because I don't know about you, but I'm busy and I have three kids. And if I'm not, you know, running them to volleyball, then I'm running them to church activities or whatever. It just gets nuts all up in here, especially around dinner time. So mm -hmm. I'm so excited for Curtly to be sharing some of her top meal prep ideas. Awesome. I'm excited too. And I've actually lately developed a lot more strategies to share and what happened was I started eating more unhealthy <laughs> and if you don't have something that's quick and easy grab and go in your house you're going to resort to unhealthy quick and easy grab and go and that's what's happening to me is I saw I, I started eating a little more chocolate and like oh I need some chocolate chips because a lot of the times when I don't have anything to eat and I didn't like how I was feeling and so I was like okay I gotta get on this meal prep thing and meal planning and once I started being serious about that, then my husband and I have had plenty of really healthy food to eat and we feel way better and we don't get starving, which makes us want to binge on sugar. So if you do have sugar cravings, this actually totally helps as well. So it helps for weight loss. It helps for just feeling more control and helping your family all feel better. And if you watch your kids, if you feed them well, they're going to behave a lot better and just have better moods and be able to focus a lot better too. I found that as well, currently. Like yeah. even today when we were driving home from Disneyland and we got up at 5.30 in the morning and my daughter, apparently she didn't eat. And, you know, because you're like throwing everything in the car and whatever. Yeah. And a couple hours in, she just starts bawling. And we're like, what's going on? And she's like, I don't feel good. And that's what happens when you don't have healthy stuff on hand. And we got some food in her and she was okay. Nobody died. But... <laughs> You can really prevent a lot of meltdowns. Yeah. It's so true. Absolutely. And that will get rid of them turning to the chips or turning to the chocolate that they somehow discover in your house. So that's cool. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to go kind of through my list of things to share with you. Um, when you first start meal planning, I want you to first think about what is working for you and what's not. Maybe nothing's working because you're not trying. So we're going to start the very basics. And so instead of trying to become this meal plan master all in one week, I highly encourage you to take it really slow because the slower you go, the more likely you are to keep that healthy habit up. And so think about how many homemade meals do I make a week? And it could be zero and don't be afraid to admit that. Just know what you do. It could be one or two. If you have kids, you probably have a ton of games um, this summer and are very busy in the evening. So you might find yourself going out to fast foods um, pretty often. So just be honest with yourself and think about what's my norm and we're going to start there. So if you make two homemade meals a week, just start trying to make them a little healthier first. As you get good at making healthier food and faster and easier and more confident, then you can start making three homemade meals a week. And then maybe you can start doubling those recipes so you have extra um, during the week. And then the other thing is I want to teach you as well a few fast and easy recipes so that... Those ones to me are separate from homemade. Homemade, well, actually not necessarily. Um, fast and easy meals will take me five to 10 minutes to put together. It's me planning ahead and having um, the staples in my fridge so I can just open and dump and say, here, eat this. That sounds really good for me because yeah. there's so many times where it's like, I literally only have 10 minutes. Yeah. So I'm excited for this. And I actually, I want you to share with people what you guys have, or I have... Amber's list right there for dinner is right there. And it's incredible. Like all of them take five, 10 minutes to put together. And she's got three stuff that are right there. That's just like quick, 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 quick. That she's gonna. It so is not fancy doing? all up in here. I might have we sparkles in my fancy. kitchen, but I don't do it <laughs> too fancy in my meals. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, yes. Awesome. Yeah, they've got like, 
they've got taco salad, salmon salad, rice and shrimp, cauliflower rice and shrimp, and we'll kind of teach you the secrets with that. So it's cool. Okay, so you've mixed, after you know how often you meal time, what's typical, pick one day, or how often you make food, pick one day that you're going to meal plan. This makes a huge difference for me. So I picked Sunday at first, because I was like, oh, Sundays are easy going, and I tested that out, and twice in a row, I didn't meal plan on Sunday, and I meal plan on Monday, and so I was like, I'll change it to Monday, because I'm testing, and I'm experimenting, and that's what happened. So do you literally put it in your calendar, like a time of day? Um, no, I don't. I do it in the morning before I get to work. Okay. So it's usually about nine o'clock in my head. It's nine o'clock on Monday mornings. Okay. So, but I would definitely put it in your planner, especially if you're busy and it's not happening. So pick a day to meal plan and it should only take you 10 to 15 minutes. So it's taking you longer. You're not going to want to do it and you're going to throw it all away. <laughs> and then the other way to make it fast is first of all, put a timer on so that you are going fast. And then start out with only having two, um, two resources. Because if you start getting on Pinterest and then looking at Facebook and then looking at some of your recipe books, you're going to be super confused and just going to stop because you're going to be thinking, oh no, is this really a good meal? I don't know. So pick two, like maybe two bloggers or two cookbooks that you trust are good and go through all the recipes and that'll help you go fast. So this is one of mine. This is called Oh She Glows Cookbook and it's lots of plants and amazing ways to cook it and season it. Totally trust it. And I use an app, uh, an app that has a lot of meals. So I sit down, flip those open, think, oh, this looks good, this looks good, and I write them down, okay? One of them that I love is um, clienthealthtips.com. Yeah. And check with your health coach too, or the person who invited you. If you don't have a specific health coach, maybe you're not doing the Optivia plan or you're not on a specific program, talk to the person who invited you on the webinar because they're going to have a lot of ideas. They're going to have a list of their favorite recipes. That could be a really simple starting point, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep. And health coaches love to share recipes for free. So use that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, do you have any for recipes for me? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to show you what it looks when I actually meal plan. Oh, sorry. Pick a day to meal plan. I also pick a day to grocery shop. Could be the same day. It's overwhelming to do it all in one day. Then don't do that. I actually do it in one day because it's fine because I'm so fast now. So I meal plan and take off to the store because I have my grocery list with me. Um, okay. So there's a few options with meal planning. Is You could have a cute little journal that's just dedicated. Oh, I froze. All right. Keep um, going. Let's see if we come back. <laughs> uh, work again. Let me try and show the screen really just so you get it up. Okay. No. Stop. Hi, how are you? Good. Oh, it's the new end. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're doing a webinar since. So. Oh no. We can hear you. Okay. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can hear us, then great. Can you see us? Can someone comment if you can see us or not? Bellamy, can you see us? <laughs> No. Oh, blast. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Let's just keep going. <laughs> okay. All right. So you can have, I'm going to show you a journal. <laughs> we'll see if you can do it. Oh, they so said they can't just here. Us. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you out. I have a journal where you can collect um, all of your recipes in. So it's all there in one spot. Or what I do is I grab white sheets of paper um, each week and I write on them and then I keep them in a really sparkly pink folder, which I will be very excited to show you. We can see. <laughs> I'll, I'll fix it. Don't worry. Okay. Let's I'll probably um, skip the like the actual meal planning until people can see me. Maybe here. I'm gonna pull somebody up. We could um, put us like take the camera off and put the camera on again. While we're looking, I'm just going to talk about kids because we don't need a video for that. So 
So a lot of a lot of moms um, wonder how to feed their kids a little bit more vegetables. It's a big problem. Um, start out. I think my first advice is, how are you with vegetables? Are you an example of eating vegetables? Are your kids watching you? Because a lot of kids, without like, if they just have an example, they're watching subconsciously. They're learning and learning what to expect in life and learning what to expect to eat when they're older. And so, first of all, be that example. And then you can start out by, like, when you bring your kids grocery shopping, if you do that, have them pick a vegetable that looks cool and figure out a recipe that you can make with it or ahead of time, you know, the next week. Um, and you can start out by adding vegetables slowly into your meals and cutting them up really small. Oh, that's Josh. I, pr I promoted <laughs> him to make him a temporary host, Josh, just so you know. <laughs> and so we can go off and go back on. <laughs> oh, smart. Oh, so smart. Okay. So yeah, start out by adding slowly and cutting up, cutting the vegetables up small. And what helps really well is just let, leave vegetables out on the counter and don't tell your kids to eat it necessarily because that sometimes make them, makes them want to rebel and do the opposite. So just have them out on the counter. And what's really fun is cutting them out into different shapes. So one of my favorite things is actually cutting broccoli stems up really thinly because it looks like a, squash, a squashed bug. And so when you're like, hey, you want a squashed bug? They're like, what? Oh, that's kind of fun. They'll, they'll giggle and eat it. Or you can have celery. You can call it dinosaur toenails or snowman noses. You know, you can be creative with it and have a good time. Okay. We are going to try. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I'm going to try unplugging and plugging back in. And seeing if that works. <laughs> okay, we are going to be. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yay, I fixed it. It was working. <laughs> and they got to see Josh's on. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, guys. All right, so that was actually my good advice, is exactly what I said. So I hope you're listening. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you how exactly I, what my meal planning looks like. I grab. Okay, here's my special journal when I got cut out. <laughs> this is a fun one. Easy to take to grocery stores. And here's my sparkly folder. <laughs> so this one is a collection of my week's worth of, um, of meal plans and some recipes in our team. Okay, so here is, I'm actually so sloppy and so easy. I don't plan breakfast because I have two breakfasts every morning. Either a green smoothie or oatmeal. <laughs> oatmeal with fruit and it's so fast and easy and that helps with meal planning. Um, so I would, I'd probably encourage most people to start with dinners anyway. And then well, for, a lot of our clients too, they have their feelings that are mm -hmm. grab and go easy. So if you're not sure what a feeling is, it's macro balance, totally healthy, something that's grab and go. So yeah. talk to your health coach. Especially if you're not a morning person, that helps a ton. Yeah, it's important me. to have your breakfast because if you go too long without food, you're suddenly in the afternoon tanked, you're starving, you're going to overeat something, or you'll be more attracted to the sugary things, the fast and easy um, food that just kind of delivers dumps sugar into your system, like bread. Um, okay, so I just plan dinners, you guys, and my, my lunches are leftovers or just kind of staples that we have all the time. All right, so I just go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to Sunday, all right? So, you don't have to be high tech. Like, this is what I love about this. Anybody can do this, right? Yes. Piece of paper, write yep. it down. You can do it on a Google spreadsheet if you're more of a computer person, too. So I flipped open my book, said, oh, this tomato basil pasta looks pretty cool, or this twice-baked potato looks awesome. So I test them out, and as you're starting, don't test too many things out because you're going to get overwhelmed and you're going to quit. So, like, look at the stuff you're already making and plan that for now as you start getting healthier. And then on the back, you guys, um, this is okay. This is my real thing. It's super sloppy <laughs> on the back, you guys. I'm writing the ingredients down. So here is a dinner. And this is the ingredients that I knew that I usually don't have staples for. So in the future, I can quickly look at this and like, oh yeah, I need this one. So I'm gonna write that down and then have a list of what to buy at the grocery store. So here is each recipe and what I need from them, and then here is what I need to buy at the grocery store. Um, so I grab this with me. I also take pictures of it just in case I forget. And then I have it on my phone. That's and this smart. happened twice already. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Like, well, recently, I mean. Okay, so you have that down. And that is the basics of no planning. Write down some ideas and know that you have to be flexible. Sometimes you're not going to be able to do that. Or sometimes you have to make something else out of it. 
So as far as planning with your schedule, I have another example for you. So here is Monday to Sunday. And these open boxes are nights that you're actually home and might have more time to cook something that you might want to experiment with and make something a little fancier. I keep things pretty simple. And then, so Tuesdays and Thursdays, for example, maybe you don't have games on those nights. So you're like, okay, I'm going to plan those meals. I'm going to make double um, so that we can have them for leftovers the next day or for lunches. And then for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, say you want to have fast and easy meals. And so and be, we'll be providing five um, sample recipes after this, and I'll be cooking a fast and easy meal for you that should take about 10 minutes, okay? So learning how to use staples and spices well, you can make anything so, so fast. All right, so let me give you a few more tips with meal planning. Um, say whenever you have a recipe that you tested out and it was really good and all of your kids liked it, we call that a five-star recipe. So write that down somewhere, maybe on a separate list of like the winners. And so when you're meal planning for the future, you can look at those winners and say, I, I know my kids like this and this, and soon you have a huge collection of winners and your meal planning will go so, so fast. And you can even start saving meal plans and, and recycle them. So you're not like giving them five new dinners that they've never tried all in one week. Yes. And they're like, when are we going to have something we like? Exactly. Right? <laughs> That's really smart, actually. For yeah, me. I like that. I know a woman who does a 10-week. She saved enough recipes to make a 10-week cycle meal plan of all the five-star recipes and every child in her family liked them. Wow. Yeah, so she just, like, it was so fast. And easy. We mostly eat that same thing every week. So <laughs> we're that <laughs> works. <laughs> The healthiest people are the ones that can make food fast and just kind of do the repetition. Yep. So, okay, here's a few other things. If you guys don't do online grocery pickup, do it. Um, do you do that, Ember? I don't do it. I but send I my do. husband to the store and he's amazing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to give you a list of staples. So listen up. Here are some staples that are fast and easy to get at the grocery store to keep in your house. So first one, a big bag of spinach. And that is fast salads. That's for, you know, the base of any of anything. Get a big bag of pre-cut meat. So where do you get yours? I know Costco. you get go Costco. Oh yeah. Cooked chicken, rotisserie chicken. They take it off of the bone, you guys. If you did not know about this, it's just like changed my life. Oh yeah. That's so cool. And it's it's cut up in small pieces and you can plan ahead and kind of thaw it before you're gonna cook it the next day. Like thaw it and then the night before, grab the chicken out, put it in the fridge so it can be thawing. Get frozen bags of vegetables and fruit. We live off of frozen bags, is bags of vegetables and fruit. We use the fruit for green smoothies all the time, and then the vegetables for the fast and easy 10-minute meals in the evenings. Oh, yeah. Rice, cauliflower. I'm, you could use that for everything, you guys, okay? My yeah. husband buys, like, he gets all the bags of rice, cauliflower from Walmart <laughs> out of the frozen, and you just put it in your freezer. And then if you're like, what do I have for veggies? It's like you always have rice, always cauliflower. Have them. Yeah, that's so cool. Good. And then I always get cans of low sodium or no sodium um, diced tomatoes and beans. I'll actually show it to you because this can go, the recipes I'll send you. Like if you have cans of tomatoes, you can make anything. That's true. So this is no salt added. That's pretty cool. And then this one I couldn't find no salt. So that is 50% less sodium. So it's really, really helpful. Well, that's smart too because a lot of times when they can things, they add extra sodium and you really don't yeah. need it. Yep. All right, and then other ideas are string cheese. That's grab and go. Mm -hmm. um, it's grab and go Greek yogurt packets, um, and then pre-cut up vegetables and fruit. And they cost a little bit more, but if it's like what it's going to take to help you have you eat healthier, you're going to save money in the long run. You pay for it now, or you pay for it later when you're ill. Yes. Right? that's Absolutely. true. <laughs> and then just a little tip is get the pre-minced stuff. Get pre-minced ginger, um, pre-minced ginger, or er, and garlic especially ginger is a little not everyone uses it but definitely get pre-minced ginger i do not like cutting up ginger <laughs> takes too long okay so now um you went to, you've got your meal plan ready um you went to the store and you're back so i'm going to talk to you about meal prepping so one tip is unload as you go so you're going to grab stuff as you're putting it away keep the vegetables out and the fruit out so you can quickly wash them and quickly cut them up so you'll be cutting things up like cucumbers and bell peppers, and you want to cut up your onions as well. And those are great. And you can put them in little Tupperware, 
in your fridge. I like to flip mine over so the clear side's up so I can always see in the Tupperware oh, what's there. Because then they like get forgotten and then they die and stay there for a long time. Josh and I just had a talk today about keeping the fridge clean of <laughs> rotten Tupperware stuff. You gotta train that husband, right? No, it's me. <laughs> I keep train on forgetting. <laughs> Josh is the one who's better at it. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Okay, and so, all right. Okay, so that is that quick tip. Just cut up things before, have them washed. They're fast and easy. Grapes, just wash them all really quick. Okay, so here's your meal plan. I stick it on my fridge. And so the night before, you guys, if you can make this into a habit, you'll do really well. The night before, check, take a look at, okay, so for Thursday, tomorrow I'm making twice baked potato. You've got the recipe on the back. You're going to look at what you got to do. And I forgot to tell you this too, but I write down what I need to do ahead of time when I'm writing down the recipe. So in the morning, you guys, that's when you start the longer process. If you need to bake potatoes, do it in the morning. If you need to make pasta, do it in the morning. Anything that takes a little bit longer, I like to make the rice in the morning or I, I cook beans in my pressure cooker or lentils in the morning as well. And the secret is cook dinner in the morning. <laughs> I recently discovered this and it changed my life. It's just cook in the morning when things are a little more calm and peaceful. Because I don't like cooking dinner at five to seven. Like things happen, you're so busy. Or hungry. And hungry, yes. Yes, that's exactly. so true. And for everyone who is in a weight loss phase, don't worry, we're going to give you like tweaks, how you can tweak things for um, lemon yes. green. Absolutely. Cool. So, yep, do that. And then the other thing is, when you're looking ahead real quick, pull out all the ingredients. You've got the dry ingredients, put all the spices um, in one place on the counter. And then anything in the fridge, put them in a little container. Like maybe you have a meal prep container that's special to remind you in your fridge. Put everything there. So in the morning, you're like half of the, half of the, like, oh, the tension is gone because you're already halfway there, okay? All right, and then thawing. If you're doing doing meat, you can thaw it, and then you're good to go. Cool, cool. Okay, are you ready to cook this up, really? I think so. Let okay, me sure. Okay. I'm pretty excited. So. Okay. Okay, let's move these chairs. Oh, someone is at my door. <laughs> okay, disregard that. My daughter is getting the door. Okay, currently. Okay, and then two more things too. Um, the last few tips I have. When you walk in, like, say you're going to be cooking, it's a Tuesday night, right when you walk in the door, turn the, turn the oven on. Um, also, like, just in general, cooking two fancy meals a week or, or less, do mostly fast and easy. Cook, some people cook, cook bulk on Sundays, and that's when you've got, like, most of your bases done. Uh, sometimes I like to cook the black beans and the lentils or potatoes or sweet potatoes all on a Sunday and get that done so I have them so fast and easy. Okay, so here's the demo. I'm going to be doing um, my favorite, like Mexican food is super easy to me and it's fast. Um, and this is going to be on one of the recipe guides. It's for people on, on plan losing weight right now and it's for people just trying to eat healthy in general. Okay, so here is my rice right here. I, you would hopefully have this all done and cooked, or you can just turn it on right now, like when you start. And that would just look like me grabbing this, dumping it in there, putting the water and flipping it on. So I'm done. And then I've got two bell peppers. So here is one, and then here's a red bell pepper. And I already chopped one up. This is how I like to chop one up. Either you go like that, just take the core out, or I'm really lazy. I just cut the top off like that. And I grab the middle section. And it's really fun because sometimes you take off these little cakes inside. Okay, I'll rinse it off from uh, the season side. Split it in half. And there's actually like fun YouTube videos you can watch to become a really fast chopper. It's fun to see. I, my sister's actually extremely fast at chopping. It's like an art. <laughs> okay, and then for the fast and easy, um, I actually didn't include fresh onion or fresh garlic because that takes more time to chop up the garlic for the onion unless you already did, and that would be optimal. So I included it just as um, powder 
form and then how to substitute if you have like real but this is like a super lazy way you guys all right okay so i've got the pot right here just a one pot idea and what i do is two cans this is this whole cook for two to three people so just be ready to double it so Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I am the assistant here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. So I'm back in it. And I'm just going to keep beans with the juices. And I'm using can. You can make your own. It's cheaper that way. But can is so, so fast. Remember to take that. And throw in the bell peppers. And the rest of the bell peppers. You guys can make this as fancy as you want. This is like the dirt simple way to do it. Okay? You can even find frozen bags of pepper, and that will go really fast. So frozen bags of pepper and onion, I just can't find any. So here is corn. I suggest two cans of tomatoes, um, and if you're doing beans, two cans of beans, if you're doing meat, get a pound of beef, get a pound of turkey, um, whatever you want to add to it. So it can be frozen. You can cook a huge batch on Sunday, and then just pull it out the night before, like in its own special closet guy. Or cook it if you got them. So I'll probably do, and then for vegetables, I usually just suggest two to three cups for what I'm doing. But I always eyeball it, I don't measure, and it goes faster. So it's looking really pretty and colorful. And now for um, seasoning. So this is this is what I want to teach you. We're sending you a free um, spice guide of four different cultures. So you're going to know the basic spices for Mexican food, Italian, Asian, and American. So if you can start getting those in your head, I would print it out and stick it inside of your cupboard. That's my, that's my secret as well. I do a recipe a lot. Sometimes I don't want to cook something if I have to take five steps and find the recipe. It's really weird. <laughs> and so I print it out and I stick it onto the cabinet inside of it. And that's what you can do with your spice guy. Okay, so uh, the basic spices for Mexican, they're gonna be your onion and garlic. You can have them fresh, but I have them here like this. And then you're gonna have paprika. You can have gourmet paprika, uh, gourmet smoked paprika once you start getting used to this whole thing, but don't get a rum. And then it's cumin and chili powder. So really, for Mexican, it's these three. <laughs> if you're just going to do the ba bare basics. Paprika, chili powder, and cumin. And then a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. And that's all, you guys. So I'll grab these really cute measuring spoons. And I'll see what was in my recipe so you guys can follow this. But really, it's just going to be eyeballing it pretty soon. Should we come in closer? Sure. Be yeah. a camera person. Yeah. So you don't make anybody sick here. Okay. <laughs> this is so cute. Awesome. Look inside of the pot. So there's half a teaspoon of garlic. I'm gonna do, I don't have the recipe right in front of me, so this is, minced garlic is different than powdered garlic, just to let you know for the ratios. And then cumin is one and a half teaspoons, and see, I'm not even measuring. Once you like start exploring this, you guys, you'll be able to taste it and just like, make sure you always have enough seasoning, otherwise it just doesn't taste good and you think that you're bad at seasoning and you're not, just always put more. And then the chili powder is going to be two teaspoons, and then I'm almost done. Chili powder is kind of what's going to make it hot, so you might want to be just a little bit careful for the end of taste. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Oh, you were already looking. Ta-da! And if you're doing meat, you just put it in there, and you turn on the stove. You get it going, and at this point, um, at this point, 
I can either add like three or four cups of water and make it a chili. So this is really, really fast. Um, and I can do that still, just whatever consistency you want. It's very forgiving. Then here's my rice. I can pour it over rice. I can dump the rice in there and then just have it like that so you eat it. Or I can put it in a, in a pot and just in a little casserole dish and then cook it, like bake it. And so having it different uh, textures like that is gonna make a fun difference for your family. So sometimes you might just have straight up chili, sometimes you might put it over rice. And I also suggested putting it over baked potatoes. So you could have done that in the morning. Get the baked potatoes, warm them up in the microwave, and cut them up. You can microwave potatoes, by the way. We do that all the time instead of putting them in the oven because it takes so long. Anything that's fast. <laughs> and then pour them over that, or you can even mix the potatoes in there as well. So that's all. It is so fast and easy, and you're good to go and make a lot of this, so you have extras for the future. So, yeah. Okay, now i got to put my camera back on here. <laughs> All right, and then the lean and green option, I mean, almost everything in there was already lean and green. That was the cool thing. So you had the peppers, you had um, it's the tomatoes, you yep. can dump that in. Just dump it the corn, you know, because that's high glycemic. Yeah. So, well, and the beans would be not yep. for five minutes, but minutes. you could easily, we didn't have time to like brown, brown yep. turkey or something. That would have been perfect. Easily do ground turkey, and you could put it over um, cauliflower oh, rice. rice. Yeah. Like seriously, it's, I love it. Okay, yeah. that's so easy. <laughs> yeah, with the recipe I'll send you, you'll see the ingredients is like, you have kind of the watery stuff. You can put two cans of tomatoes, and this is for lean ingredients. Half a can of tomatoes, so the diced tomatoes, is actually, uh, um, counts as one serving. And so, and then you've got your protein. So pick your protein, and then you put it over a healthy starch base. And so for lean and green, that's gonna be the, the rice cauliflower. Um, and you can do zoodles for, you, you'll see that on the Italian stuff. I so, love zoodles. We do those noodles. all the time. My yeah. kids like to, you know, make them too. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> all right. Okay. Does anybody have any questions now? Go ahead and type them in the chat. We just have one more oh, minute. Yeah, real salt. Let's talk about that. Yeah. It's actually Himalayan salt. <laughs> I got it at Winco, just a local bookstore. And most of the, like, if you're wondering, spices can be scary, go to your bookstore and just start testing them out instead of, like, having to commit to buying everything. But Spice, having a good spice cabinet is totally worth it. I have almost every spice out there. Not quite, but I'm working on it. And so I can make anything um, super fast. But yeah, pink Himalayan actually does taste really good. And it's got a little more spice in there, as I say. Awesome. All right. Okay. So you guys, you're going to be really happy and excited. I'm like leaning over now. I moved my chair. Um, with the PDF that's coming. So this is your free gift. This is your freebie for hopping on and for registering, even if you're watching the playback. Um, we are going to send you that PDF that Curly's put together, and it has, tell them a little bit about what's going to be on this PDF, Curly. Okay, so the five crew recipes, um, four of them are going to be like the different cultures, so there's going to be an Italian pasta, the Mexican that we just made, these are so fast, they're not fancy, and there's going to be an Asian one with also my favorite peanut sauce, peanut butter sauce, soy sauce, that kind of thing, and then American, I actually give examples of how much seasonings to put in each, um, and like with American, I get four examples. So you can make any soup whenever you want. And with this combination, that helps a lot. And then I also have um, five, so I think three ideas for your kids for fast and easy. And then a link, I don't know if the link's gonna work though. And then at the end, just the spice guide with the four different cultures in it. And then how, like what usually, what vegetables go with what culture, so you can do that. So. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Curly. You're so welcome. Thank you for coming on, everyone, and for your time. So I hope it works out for you. Keep trying. Like, keep tweaking so you can get your meal plan done. The biggest thing I forgot to tell you is find a partner. So your health coach can be your partner, your accountability partner, or find a friend that you're going to text your meal plan every single week to. And that is the only thing that's kept me being really good with meal planning is because I know I have to send it to somebody. So yeah, you can have that coach be that as you first start, but have an accountability partner. Otherwise, it's going to be a wish for the rest of your life, and you'll never quite do it. It's all about so. support. Like seriously, if you're trying to do this alone, if you're trying to get healthy on your own, you guys, you're missing the boat. There is free support. Yeah. <laughs> um, get with a health coach. The person who advised you on this webinar is most likely a health coach. Um, we have a whole support community. We have Facebook groups where we share recipes and ideas and and support each other when we're feeling down or when we're celebrating because we're doing amazing. 
Um, and then making life simple, like with ideas like this and also with um, just simple everyday feelings, fueling your body, making sure your macros are balanced, things like that. So yep. thanks again for joining us. And we will get to this playback and also that freebie PDF by tomorrow. So thanks so much, you guys. Awesome. See you later.